guys, it's Caleb here. Today we're talking about two different types of AR500 armor systems. Uh, number one we have here, this is the AR500 armor. This is their advanced shooter cut steel plate, curved, and it's got the build up, extra build up layer, which costs about $25 extra if you want to do that option. Now every single test that I've seen that has been successful in defeating fragmentation and spalling has this extra build up layer, so we went ahead and got that as an option. Now over here we have the Target Man Spartan Omega Armor. Same thickness except uh, the, well, the coating itself is a little thinner and it uses a Rhino lining instead of the uh, Paxicon or Linex lining that uh, AR-500 Armor uses. And it has this cool relief of the Spartan helmet here. Overall the fit and finish, in my personal opinion, um, the Target Man takes, takes that point. With this one, it's a little thicker overall because of the extra buildup and it's a little less, uh, it's a little more bulky and a little less uh, finished in my opinion. But what we're going to do is we're going to be testing spalling and fragmentation in the rig that we built here. Every other, let's just ignore the fact that we're using this, that's just for a uh, proof of concept. But we're going to be using some stiffer card to kind of use that to uh, display or show any type of fragmentation or spalling. But the point is, we're going to be staking these down so that all the energy um, of the round goes into the plates, and it's not going to be moving too much, so all the weight is going to be transferred into the plate itself. Uh, one thing that we've observed when watching videos of other people testing the spalling and fragmentation, they have it sitting in cardboard boxes, that stuff's just flopping around everywhere. It's not a very good representation or a very scientific test. So what we did was we built this rig to provide basically... 360 degrees of uh, spalling detection. So we're going to be using that on both armor systems, utilizing various calibers out of various weapons. So you can see that kind of fits in there. A little bit of movement, but overall the energy should be transferred directly into the plate. But we're going to be testing the spalling and fragmentation, and uh, we'll show you the cost overall as well. And also another thing that we've noticed is a lot of the reviews, uh, either AR-500 Armor or the Target Man, they send their plates out to these uh, individual reviewers as kind of like a, like they basically entice them to review it for, you know, their purposes. But we actually went out there and bought these ourselves for independent testing. So there's no bias either way. Uh, we did pay full price except for like the Black Friday specials and stuff. But uh, we did pay our own money to get this testing done so it's not biased in either direction so we're going to give you a completely unbiased and reliable review and uh, comparison between the two armor systems to see which one performs better like I said I already like the fit and finish a little better on the uh, target man plates this one's a little rougher but overall we'll see how it performs so with that said we're going to take it out to the range shoot it a couple times with different types of uh, ammunition and firearms and we'll see which one performs the best. Okay so for this first test we're going to run 9mm since it's probably the smallest caliber you're going to encounter. Uh, this is full metal jacket 124 grain out of a Glock 19. And uh, this is actually at 10 yards for a pistol range. Okay so we just shot it with three rounds of 9mm you can see inside, appears to be no fragmentation. We're not going to take it apart just because we want to uh, keep it in its co current configuration. But there is quite a bit of bulging on the plate itself, but uh, no fragmentation with 9mm. Okay, now we're going to try it with a 45. This is jacketed hollow point, 230 grain, out of a 6-hour 1911. So there is a little tiny fragment. Let's see if we can get it in focus. Right there where the tape is. Yep, it's a tiny fragment, but you can see uh, because of my shot placement, it's all on the very bottom, it's bulging out the bottom. So a little bit of fragmentation for the 45 uh, peeking out through the bottom based on my uh, shot placement. 
This is going to be 55 grain 223 out of a 16 inch uh, AR. This is going to be at 10 yards because we're too lazy to move the target. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to try to get a little more to the right so we can kind of get a better view of what might do. Going hot. So after hitting with the 223 55 grain, you can see there is a little bit of fragmentation out the side and it did peel off a section of the plating itself. The coating did split open. Uh, let's see. We'll take that open and uh, give you guys a closer look later but there is fragmentation a little bit on the side. We can take a closer look in a little bit here. Okay, now this is M855 green tip penetrator ammo, 62 grain out of a 16 inch barrel. Try to get it a little closer to center. And that's the only change? Or, oh, new spring. New spring, yeah. Knocked it off the stand. Okay, so as you saw, the uh, plate fell out. But, uh, Taking a look inside, looks like some of the fragmentation may have may have come out the existing uh, tear in the uh, in the sorry the plate in the coating. So then you can see a lot more uh, of that chunky stuff, the actual lining coming off. But uh, I don't believe there's any more fragmentation than there was before. Just a lot of the chunky stuff flying off. Plate itself. This is a tear that I was talking about. Getting a little more focus for you. There we go. Getting sprayed up by a machine gun or something. But the rounds hit around here. Some of it came out here. Pretty much just blasting out the uh, a lot of the coating out against the wall here, out of the existing hole. For our next test, it's going to be three rounds of 30 out six, 150 grain. Out of an M1 Garand, I'm gonna try to hit it as close to the center as I can, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, I think we're done with the spalling test, just because our entire rig, the paper actually just fell off. So um, you can see, because of the 45 entry. Down to the bottom, we have uh, a lot of crap that just kind of fell out right here. And there's definitely spalling right here in the middle at the bottom. And you can see where it kind of ripped off the chunks there. And also, because of that existing tear in the coating right there to the right of the camera here, you'll see that there's significant fragmentation over here on the right. But I'm pretty sure if... Uh, if it was a pristine plate, it still would have been able to uh, retain even the 30 out 6. There was a little bit of back force deformation, but it did not penetrate. And here's actually a 3 30 out 6 round that uh, pretty much came apart and fell out the bottom of the 45 exit point. Alright, so now we have this guy. This is a Swiss K31 bolt action rifle shooting the. Uh, GP11. <laughs> it's a uh, 170 grain, 7.1 millimeter round. I've never shot this before, so we'll see what happens. At this point, we're just testing for penetration because uh, the spalling is already failing, the coating is failing, so we're just going to test for penetration. Wow. Oh. Okay. Ow. <laughs> Holy Jesus. Okay, so as expected, no penetration. We did feel a little bit of uh, bulging in the rear from uh, the 30 out 6 and definitely the uh, 7.1 millimeter rounds, but uh, zero penetration, slight bulges. Might knock you off your feet, but uh, obviously the spalling is no longer uh, 
being tested because the the coating is compromised at this point. But uh, it did definitely stop the round. So if this was a fresh plate, it may or may not have stopped the 7.1. We don't know, but uh, that's something to consider. Still, no penetration in the rear. Just for fun, we're gonna hit it with a one ounce slug to see how much uh, damage it'll do to it at 10 yards. So this is a one ounce full power slug, uh, two and three quarters inch. <laughs> so, just fire the slug at it. This is what's left of the slug, which came out the bottom, I assume, unless it came out the top, I really can't tell at this point, or maybe the side and bounced off. But here's what's left of the slug. And a nice little hole center here in uh, Mr. Spartan's forehead. But uh, again, no penetration as expected because uh, AR-500 is pretty pretty solid. You're not going to get any penetration. But there is a slight bulge in the back, nice and uh, round here where the 12 gauge slug impacted. And I'm getting all this lead fragmentation dripping out the bottom now. But uh, definitely uh, a lot of additional spalling after we uh, removed the... Uh, the uh, paper covering all over here on the sides but uh, that's what we got so far with the uh, target man spartan armor we're gonna switch over to the AR-500 armor now that's the front all right so same thing with the AR-500 armor we're gonna use 9 millimeter full metal jacket 124 grain out of a Glock 19 three shots at 10 yards so this is the inside after three rounds of 9 millimeter Little bit of stuff blowback from uh sorry from the front of the armor. Nothing on the sides here. Except for a little bit over here where I pull, totally pulled the shot and it hit left right on the very edge. So you can see the fragment, bullet fragments go into the two by four and into a uh, little bit of fragmentation out of the back there. But overall, two rounds in the dead center, no fragmentation whatsoever, two little bulges as expected. Okay, again, this is the 45 caliber, 230 grain jacket of hollow point out of a six hour 1911. Hopefully that'll pull the shot this time. Okay, low, but they're all in. Okay, this is after hitting with the 45. So bright, I don't know. Okay, there's a the focus. First two, low left. They turned out to be like little ant hills, which is interesting. Didn't see that with the target mat stuff. But still no fragmentation. I hit one low to the left edge. Very similar to where I put the 45 on the uh, on the target man. We had a little bit of fragmentation. Very similar to what we saw with the uh, the target man uh, Spartan armor when we hit it with the 45 low. So tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Let's see if we can get in focus. There we go. Tiny little bit there. So earlier with a 45, um, I said that it did not penetrate. It actually glanced off this bottom edge here uh, where we hit it. it came out and it, bent it uh, went through the uh, paper into the 2x4 there. So it did go through uh, in the very, very edge of it. Very similar to what we did earlier with the 9mm over there. So, yep. Okay, this is going to be the 55 grade 223. 16-inch barrel. 10 yards. See if I could get it to towards the top a little bit. Here we go. Okay, this is after three rounds, 55 grain, two, two, three. You can't really see it, but they're right here in the center here. Top three. And we do have fragmentation a little bit in the top left hand corner. There is a bit of fragmentation there, right at the top, and I'm not actually sure. I think it just came out directly out of the lining. There's no tears or anything like that, but there's definitely fragmentation. Where you see that dark spot, there's actually little holes in there. Pretty small holes, but holes nonetheless. And we'll see if we can get the shot placement right there. Three holes. Green tip, MA55, 5.56 NATO, 16 inch barrel, 10 yards. Armor, AR500 armor. 
standard plate, 10 by 12, extra buildup. Something hit me in the balls. Hit oh, me in the face. God. This is hitting with the MA55. As you can see, got a lot of residue coming out here and severe fragmentation down at the bottom. Um, out to the side here. Pretty much almost all the way around. All here is uh, spalling with some fragmentation out here in the front. But uh, super tight group right here. Three little dots right in the center of the screen here. And you can see where the uh, coating kind of peels off at the bottom. Which accounts for a lot of the fragmentation on the bottom. Huge chunk right here. You can actually see a piece of lead jacket there. This is with the MA55. So there you have it. No additional spalling on the left side, but on the right side, definitely new uh, traces of fragmentation and a penetration through the paper here. I'm like Garand, 150 grain, 30 out 6, 10 yards. Hopefully, we don't get too much blowback because I'm not sure of this armor at this point in terms of uh, spalling and fragmentation retention. So here we go. We should actually move this. Out. Oh. Oh. Does anyone have a helmet? That... Give me that motorcycle helmet. Hey, you should actually <laughs> show the video of me doing this. <laughs> forget it. Forget it. Let's just do it, it quick. Super safe. Super safe. Oh god, I'm scared. Same thing happened. So hit it with a 30 out six, much like the AR, uh, sorry, the target man armor. The rig fell down, the plate fell down, and ripped the whole thing down. So we're gonna stop the uh, spall testing. But uh, it's important to note, again, it ripped over here on the side, came out over here, it came out the front actually, and up the top a little bit. But the uh, three rounds, two in the middle, one out the side here, with the 30 out six. You can actually see the lead travel grazing across the uh, plate itself. There's lead residue all the way across here from the from the impact of this round here. And lead residue all over in the front here from uh, from that 30 out 6 round. Lead residue all over the side here. So appears to be a shitload of fragmentation, I'll say that much. But let's take a look at the paper here. Fragmentation up here on the top where it came out the top there. All little chunks of lead here. And the big, big one here is uh, this giant hole where seemingly the entire slug came out and uh, exited through the side off in the distance somewhere. But you can see where all the uh, lead powder and uh, the residue came out here. So, uh, so far, I don't know, it's kind of a toss up, but it looks like we're getting slightly more fragmentation with the AR-500 armor compared to the target man. But of course, this is all after everything's been compromised uh, with multiple rounds and multiple hits. So we're trying to make this um, a direct comparison under uh, identical circumstances. So we're going to test it with the rest of the rounds now just for uh, shits and giggles. So again, this is a Swiss K31 rifle. Correction on the caliber, it's a 7.5, not 7.1. 170 grain out of a bolt action rifle. Three rounds, 10 yards. This, I'm actually going to make it 11 yards because I'm kind of scared with the fragmentation at this point. <laughs> round two. And let's do round three while it's still up there. He keeps doing that. He's hitting me in the face. <laughs> Doesn't like you. So hit him with the 7.5, super, super bulge up in the front here from all the captured fragmentation. But a lot of it still leaked out through the side where it was torn open. Even opened up a crack all the way through the very top where it took out a chunk of uh, spall protection here, the coating. And it actually embedded lead chunks and debris into the, the wood here where we had it when it was laying down like this after a few hits. Pretty much hit into here and just spray it over here. You can see where the chunks of wood is uh, just missing. And over here, we're just tore through here. So uh, that's pretty bad news if you get hit with a 7.5 uh, at an angle where uh, you have a compromised plate. One ounce slug, 10 yards, take cover. 
Okay, one ounce slug in the front, dead center. Bulge in the back, more or less the same as the one, uh, the bulge on the uh, TTM armor. So that performed about the same in terms of a uh, back force deformation, back base deformation. But uh, the hole does look a little different, and uh, no penetration as expected. So that pretty much concludes the uh, shooting part of uh, the test here. We'll talk about a little small. Uh, details here and there uh, from what we observed with the plate during the testing on both plates actually. But a uh, special thanks to my buddy Steve and Dennis who lent me the uh, 1911 and the uh, Garand and also the uh, K31. So uh, we'll take a look closer, take a closer look when we get home. Okay so now we're back at home uh, we've had some time to review it about two months since the last time we were out there shooting the previous footage. Now that we're back, we're going to do some quick overview on some key points. Number one being performance, uh, number two being build quality, number three being comfort, and finally cost. So performance-wise, um, both plates more or less perform the same. There were shortcomings that were seen across both platforms. Uh, namely, if you hit around anywhere within three-quarters of an inch of the edges, you're more than likely going to get some you know, significant fragmentation or uh, fragments coming out and doing some damage. Another thing is once we hit it with a rifle, um, both plates exhibited fragmentation. Of course, in our situation, we were a little closer than most people did it. We did it at 10 yards, which is could be potentially you know, realistic. But uh, we did that, it was a little extreme, but nonetheless, both of the plates performed more or less the same with some minor fragmentation to begin with. Follow-up shots with everything else that we hit it with uh, was more than less the same. Although I do believe that the uh, the Target Man Spartan Armor did hold uh, some rounds a little more effectively uh, than the um, the AR-500 Armor system. So more or less the same, um, but because of the fact that it was compromised, I can't really give it... Both plays were compromised, so I really can't say w which one really performed better. I can only go based off of the first shot with the rifles, where they both performed... Uh, more or less the same. Every other shot is kind of, you know, a, a toss-up at that point. Now, build quality. I really like the fit and finish of the Target Man plate. Number one, it's thinner. Number two, it's got a better finish, in my opinion. Uh, number three, it's a little lighter. And also, the manufacturing process, they use a single press to, uh, to basically form this plate. And um, I'm not sure if that's what uh, armor, AR-500 armor does, but uh, that's one thing to note about the Target Man. Um, I'm pretty sure you can email AR500 Armor to see uh, how they do their, uh, their bending. It'll be a more stronger, a more uniform uh, process of curving the plates, which goes into comfort. Uh, weight and thickness goes into comfort as well as the curve. So we got both plates with the curve, so that's uh, a plus. Um, it costs a little more to get them uh, curved because of the uh, additional processes. But this is a little thinner, and it weighs about 0.2 ounces. Uh, sorry, 0.2 pounds lighter per plate. So if you have both plates, it's almost half a pound of uh, weight difference. And uh, because they only use one coat of the Rhino liner for the Target Man stuff, uh, it's not as thick as the AR500 armor system, which requires pretty much um, an additional coating. Uh, so it's double coating for the AR-500 armor system, since the single coating doesn't seem to be very, very effective in the other videos and tests that we've seen, so we opted for the uh, the build-up layer, which is an additional uh, $25. And um, that's probably what you want to get if you do intend on doing that. So now, going down to comfort, I would have to give it to the target man because of the reasons specified. Now, the final point is cost. So cost is probably going to be a determining factor for people looking at both of these plates because they're not out there buying the $700, uh, you know, ceramic plates or anything like that, the level four stuff. If they had the money, they wouldn't be looking at this type of armor system uh, like we did. Um, so cost, uh, normally speaking, two plates curved with the target man is going to run you $189.99 shipped and two plates curved with extra buildup for the AR-500 armor system is going to run you 
two twenty for both plates plus an additional twelve dollars shipping. So you're looking at a difference of about uh, forty two dollars um, in the two plates. And since they perform the same, more or less, the cost obviously goes toward uh, the target man wins that point as well. So cost isn't the first thing you should look at. It's probably the last thing you should, or second to last thing you should look at. Uh, performance is obviously the key factor in both of these, but since performance is more or less the same with both systems, um, with the added comfort and fit and finish of the uh, Target Man plates, I really would give the overall advantage to the Target Man because of the low cost, uh, you know, more or less the same performance and a better fit and finish and overall comfort is a little better as well. So, that being said, um, Hopefully this review kind of gives you guys some insights on these two different plate systems and uh, hopefully you guys can make an informed decision based on this review and based on this video. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and uh, stay safe out there.